Peter Peltier and Dino Butler and Rob Robidoux, and they, they caught Dino Butler and Rob Robidoux, uh, but Leonard, Leonard didn't think he'd get a fair trial, so he uh, fled to Canada, and, uh, which is unfortunate, because if Leonard would have been uh, captured with Dino and Rob, um, he'd be uh, out of jail. He wouldn't be in prison today, because the, uh, the jury, uh, which was uh, at, at the jury trial, they brought all the evidence in, um, and the, um, they talked to the people and, and presented to a, a jury, and the jury uh, found them, um, acquitted them on the ground of s grounds of self-defense. You know, they said, well, why were you FBI's there? Why didn't you say who you were? You know, you come in shooting, these people have a right to defend themselves, just like if somebody breaks into your house, and um, you have a right to, sh you know, if, if your life is threatened, then you have a right to defend yourself, and, you know, maybe you might shoot that person and kill them. Well, that's, you're protecting your life. So that's what happened with, the, with Dino and Rob, and the, the jury decided that they were, so they acquitted them on grounds of self-defense. So if Leonard would have been in that, in that trial, he'd be free today. But there's, um, there's just some, some hatred, it seems like, of the FBI towards the American Indian movement. And, and because they got acquitted, it really in, you know, infuriated the FBI. They wanted to, those guys to rot in prison, just like they have made Leonard do for this past 35 years. You know, for standing up for um, something that he believed in, something that, you know, to help defend these people, uh, the traditional people in Pine Ridge. And, and now he's uh, been suffering in prison for 35 years. And um, yeah, there's been so many efforts over the years to try and help him get his release. But even in Leonard's own trial, you know, he was, the American government lied to the Canadian government and falsified some affidavits and to extradite Leonard back to the United States. They actually basically kidnapped him and, and brought him back to the United States um, in violation of some international laws. Mm -hmm. And um, so Leonard is, um, and, and once they brought him back to the United States, um, they, they decided that they were going to put the full weight of the law on, on Leonard Peltier. So in Leonard's trial, you know, they brought this uh, known racist judge out of uh, retirement mm. to here. And this guy was known to not like Native American people. And they brought him out, out of uh, retirement to hear Leonard's uh, case. And they also had um, the evidence that was allowed into Dino Butler and Rob Roberts' trial was not allowed in Leonard's trial. You know, they, they said there was these, uh, Leonard used his gun to kill these FBI agents at point blank range. And these guys, the bullets in these, um, the ballistics showed that they didn't match the gun that they tied to Leonard. But that wasn't allowed. The evidence that could have helped Leonard was not allowed in the trial. So it was, it was kind of like they railroaded Leonard into the prison, you know, and Leonard knew he wasn't getting a fair trial. And there's, you know, if you read, um, in Leonard's, some of Leonard's books, there's, you know, uh, like the one I mentioned about um, My Life is My Sundance, uh, that's a good book to read, and, you know, Leonard just tells the judge straight up, he knows he's going to uh, uh, prison, and that, you know, uh, he's been fighting for all these things, and it's been, he felt hopeless, and, you know, he knew they were railroading him in prison, so he basically gave him a piece of his mind, and they, yeah, they put him into prison, and he's been there for over 35 years now. There's a really good movie um, called Incident at Oglala. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hear what you think of that movie, but I know that they do a really good job trying to examine the evidence that was tied to Leonard in the case, and um, and they go through that, you know, bit by bit. And what are your feelings about that movie? Do you did you find that? Um, well, I think uh, it's it's a little dated now. I mean, that was uh, it's a great movie that was produced by Robert Redford, uh, mm -hmm. Incident at Oglala. I'd like to encourage everybody to see that if they haven't, mm -hmm. and also to read Leonard's book, uh, My Life Is My Sundance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, by Leonard Peltier. And I thought it was uh, good to, sh uh, it to uh, explain what had happened, the the whole environment there on Pine Ridge. Why why were there so many FBI's there in, on the reservation? Mm -hmm. You know, and why were the, uh, the local police there um, have so much hatred towards AIM, mm -hmm. you know, being there? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the, uh, the local people there didn't like the, the Dick Wilson, the local guy at the time, the who, who was uh, the tribal chairman, and uh, they didn't like what he was doing because he was, uh, you know, supposedly getting these uh, extra special treatment from the 
uh, from the uh, federal government, and they were supplying them with weapons and and, and special and monies for the uh, to help people that he wanted to help. Mm. You know, then he was kind of siding with the non-traditional people mm -hmm. and the people that wanted to all the things that America want. You know, the the nice house with the white picket fence and the TV and all the uh, stuff that modern society has, and you know they wanted they wanted that stuff, and and he was able to get that for some people, and some people really liked him, but a lot of the tr traditional people didn't because they didn't want to sell their land. Their you know uh, some of their land they found out later after Leonard's trial, you know there was a lot um, the Peabody Mining Corporation found uranium there, and they wanted to get access to that uranium, so it comes down to the minerals, and um, you know, they wanted to get access to those minerals, and in, in order to do that, they had to sign over some of the land, and the traditional elders didn't want to sign over the land. So from um, my understanding is that that's why the, they, they, they didn't want to sell their land, so that's why a lot of these deaths were occurring, and people were getting killed, all the traditional elders, a lot of traditional people were getting murdered, because they weren't for that. They didn't want to give up their land. But after Leonard's trial had happened, and all the focus was on, on that, you know, they ended up signing over one-eighth of the reservation, mm. which was going to uh, the Peabody Mining Corporation. And, you know, there's because of that, that greed to take that, that land over, there's still today open pit mines that have, haven't been cleaned up. And mm. it's now it's causing health problems with the local uh, 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 people there that are have, having health issues now. And now that they're seeing these effects of the health issues that are happening to the uh, Caucasian people there, now it's becoming an issue for them that, you know, gee, why, why, aren't we, why don't we do something to clean this up? And it's, it's not just a problem on the reservation, now it's a global thing with all these, uh, these uranium mines that have been going around. Yeah, well, Peabody Mining Company also went down to um, the um, Big Mountain Black Mesa area yeah. and caused trouble between the Navajos and Hopis there with coal and uranium as uh, as the motive um, there too so that's interesting we, we just went and saw a movie called Gasland the other day and mm -hmm. uh, it talked about um, how they drill into the earth to, um, for natural gas and how it ends up spoiling water um, uh, water wells yeah. and, um, and and what was interesting as a native person and we went as a group of us to watch that film the first thing that came up to my mind was well we've been having to deal with that for you know, for years, but now because mm -hmm. a few non-native, a few white people are getting sick, now it's a horrible, horrible thing that's going on, you know, but, but it's been happening to reservations and native people for 30, 40, 50 years since um, there's been a need to, um, for these big corporations to um, find um, energy. Well, yeah, everybody wants energy, and there's a price to pay for it. I mean, there, there's what they call fracking. That's what which it was is, all about, fracking. Which is about mm -hmm. fracking. They, they inject water, and they... They, um, you know, they they try and extract this l the gas out of there. Right. But the, what it's doing is actually people are turning on their faucets and, and lighting matches, exactly. and the flames are shooting mm -hmm. out of their water, and they're drinking that and getting sick. Yeah. So this is a a big problem that's kind of uh, going around the world now in in America. So I think, uh, which would you rather have? Would you rather have some water that's clean and that's safe to drink, or would you do you want gas to heat up your Oven mm -hmm. or a stove. I mean, there's you got there's got to be another way to 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 get those. Uh, you but know. what's interesting is that native people have known that these companies and the greed that goes along with it, um, human life isn't worth anything to them, and um, we've known that for 40 to 50 years since they've been doing that on our reservation lands. But now because it, they've gone out of reservations and are doing it to you know um, you know pieces of lands that white people own, now it's becoming a, an issue in society. Well, it's been an issue for a long time with indigenous peoples from all over the world. Exactly. You know, and I feel sorry for those, uh, you know, those Afghanistan people now because they found um, lithium mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. huge amounts over there. It's a, you know, they can use, make batteries from it, but that's, that's also a bad substance to have around too. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, what America government did to the Native American people here which is, you know, our tribe, I'm from the Muscogee Nation, we were forced to relocate from our, our, our homelands to Oklahoma, along with the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, the Seminole, 
and the creek, the Muskogees, uh, they called the creeks because they always lived by the waterways, mm -hmm. and, uh, and forced them to Oklahoma. Well, 